So these peoples also used uh, bone, um, antler, uh, if you're walrus, walrus tusk, uh, norwal horn, um, stone, and wood. Um, and they used a lot of these things as decorative items and tools. Okay. Um, a lot of times whale bones would be carved down into knives. Uh, <clears throat> so again, a lot of these items are very useful. And like I said, the, the whole animal was used um, by, these, by these groups of people. Um, housing. Igloos are typically the ones that we hear about uh, when we're talking about these, these groups of people. They would make kind of large uh, brick structures, uh, igloo homes. They tended to have a lower living room where it captured the cold air. Um, and they would like build in seating and or beds into the sides of those um, other rooms heated by oil lamps. Um, some of the other groups like the Aleuts uh, are going to be more subterranean. So partially in the in the earth, uh, partially outside of that. So you have everything from the use of wood all the way up to these groups that only had uh, ice, basically. Um, and very skilled, right? A lot of these people could build these homes very quickly. Um, I think a lot of people wonder... Well, how do they learn how to do that? Well, again, one piece would be watching animals build out, uh, uh, you know, uh, fox or whatnot, building kind of their own little caverns into the ice. Um, but then also just utilizing kind of common sense and, and logic to, to overcome some of these issues were also a big piece of this. Um, kayaks, it's noted that, that kayaks uh, are still pretty much the same general design. Um, and technology that we use today. In fact, riding a, a turned over kayak is still called the Eskimo roll. Um, so uh, a lot of, uh, and they're, they're, it's a key piece of their livelihood, but also we have, as Westerners, adopted this. So um, yeah, big influence by the, the indigenous in this, this uh, technology way. Um, Yumiakas are uh, again, those big kind of more open boats for, for whale hunting. Harpoons um, is more for seal and whale hunting. They did use them for birds as well. Ultimately, it's it's like a hook with a with a wire on it, right? Um, that's going to have, the hook is going to have more of like a pole attached to it um, so that you can harpoon something and pull it back in. Um, oil lamps talked about it already uh, in terms of using the whale blubber to heat and light areas. Um, clothing, very, very important. Uh, this was almost a universal in this area. Hooded parka and pants made out of caribou. Uh, women tended to have longer pants, shorter boots. Men tended to have longer boots, shorter pants. And the boots were made out of seal skin. A lot of times they would harden uh, overnight. They would freeze. And women had to chew on them in order to uh, loosen them up for the men. This was also part of their kind of gender role. Um, a lot of times their clothing was also used as bedding for pillows or whatnot as well. Um, so clothing construction was a huge part of their day and a lot of um, onus was put on kind of uh, women in this this role. Uh, religion and art. Um, most of these groups believed in reincarnation and names were super important because a grandchild may actually be reincarnated as their grandparent. Okay, so giving a child the grandparent's name almost hearkened in this this idea that the spirit was coming back um all beings had souls sometimes multiple souls um in their kind of religion people had three souls one went to the afterlife when you died uh the second was was the soul of your life breath your living self that died when you died and the third was associated with names so again um names had a soul character that if you renamed your your son or daughter a grandparent's name, uh, you could basically hearken back this kind of spirit to come back with you, uh, which which serves some function, right? You never actually uh, lose relatives completely uh, when you have this. So does it does it help with grief? Absolutely. If everything is connected in a circular way, um, it's not a permanent loss, right? So there's some function here. Um, and again, why is always kind of the question that we're we're wondering, hmm, I wonder what, what, what this did. Uh, they did have good and bad spirits, and usually those were controlled by shamans. Um, shamans were, again, both religious leaders that controlled kind of this, this evil, almost magic or spirit. Uh, they could cast kind of curses on people, but also cure using their supernatural powers. Um, and they also tended to be the medical practitioners. So if somebody got sick, 
um, they would they they tended to um, go kind of do these symbolic um, medicinal um, things to cure cure individuals, but also plants. Uh, knowledge of all of those element natural elements are also going to play into to uh, the medical kind of world of of these cultures. Um, after puberty, women would tattoo their face and breasts. Um, women and men wore their hair long. Uh, men didn't get tattoos. Women were the group that got tattoos, and they would use uh, bone um, to do that. Uh, again, long hair by both. Uh, men would pluck their facial hair, and they would do this to not get frostbite. Uh, if, if snow and ice built up on a beard, it would cause frostbite of the face, so they, they basically plucked their facial hair. Um, uh, so this is where one area where, where women kind of had the edge on men in terms of uh, not having to do uh, things like that. Arctic peoples of today, uh, your book definitely discusses. So this is an example of somebody trying to use it, uh, or not trying, but using a traditional kayak, uh, but dressed in more of a traditional like hoodie, right? Uh, military bases in the Arctic after World War II were, were massive. Uh, they ended up hiring native peoples, totally changed their, their way of life. They then started to move into Western style housing, which was colder. It was not as easy to heat. And finding those, those heating elements weren't, were very hard to do. Uh, shipping um, petroleum, petroleum and, and heating products up there was, was difficult in the beginning for sure. Um, now they've started to obviously tap some of those oil reserves. Um, traditional subsistence activities are still being utilized. Um, many of these groups are given exceptions to laws like hunting whale and hunting seal. Uh, other people cannot do this, but, but native groups can. Um, land grants in the, sorry, that should say 1970, um, have helped Alaska natives uh, uh, because they were worried that this was going to be a Dawes Act and, and basically break up these reservations and, and native land groups, but they have not. They've paid natives off for mineral rights and those kinds of things, and actually it seems to be working. So this is the, this law in 1970. Uh, Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was is actually seen as a good thing. Uh, Greenland also kind of got its like self uh, determination. They're still related to Denmark, um, a province, but but they are self determined and mostly run by Inuit people or uh, by ethnic group uh, individuals. But definitely indigenous kind of power in politics and politics and the economy. Some of the problems that Western world has introduced: alcoholism. Uh, teen birth rates are fairly high, um, and then also processed food. So uh, dental issues based on processed food, things, Western products that they have become addicted to are also very expensive because of transportation. Um, so again, these are these are areas of concern. However, your book does, and and I and, and the readings I have done, a lot of them start to paint a, a rosier picture and that people are starting to uh, go back to some of these traditional ways of life and fight off the westernization piece. Um, and there's a big push kind of, especially with Greenland, to, to institute some of these things back into schools and maintaining language. So it's not, um, it's not as dire in terms of, and I, I hate to, to uh, put this kind of in a, in a hierarchy level, to be honest, it's, it's not as dire as some of the groups that were completely wiped out. Um, by disease and westernization in the United States. Uh, these, a, a lot of these groups are still intact. They still have land. Um, they're still operating on some portion of their traditional life, um, which is much different some, than some of the groups that we see in the United States that have been kicked off the native land and, and basically destroyed. Um, so again, the Arctic, yes, there, there are areas of concern for sure, as there always are when these, with contact and cultural destruction, but but there are places to be uh, optimistic about as well in terms of, of their social uh, well-being. Um, I do want you guys to read the case study, the case studies um, on your own, uh, pages 65 to 82. They're very, very in-depth. They go through kind of the process that I did, just did in a general sense, but break it down into these tribal level groups. Um, and really what I want you to pay close attention to um, is their cosmology, some interesting creation stories here. Um, especially the, the Aleuts, interesting creation story about the first two humans and what they look like and then what their uh, offspring look like. Um, and again, we'll, we'll probably be able to, you guys will be able to bring these out in the discussion posts as well. 
Um, <clears throat> and then also look at their religion and how it related to their medicine. And then what kind of games and art did they use as well? Uh, so yeah, again, um, focus in on these case studies. Make sure that you guys uh, read these pages because they could, some of the, the questions on the, the next quiz or the midterm could show up out of this, this these specific three areas that I'm talking about here. Um, and again, I, I just, I wanna give you as much as I can about these things, but um, to a certain degree, um, you guys kind of investigating and, and diving in and I think in, into the material and owning it on your own um, kind of uh, base is, is important. And these case studies are, are great examples of that. So this, this, is, this is kind of the way that we'll go. Um, again, I realize that life is out there and, and time concerns and all of those other things. So if you didn't read prior to, the, to page 65, um, and ultimately you're okay with me covering um, from page you know, uh, 49 to 65, then I've covered that for you. These, these, the, this last section that I'm having you read is, is uh, more in depth and um, probably a little bit more interesting and, and again, makes us look at um, how everything fits in. So what I just described, do all of those groups fit in perfectly with what I just said? No, remember, there's a, there's a spectrum, and these groups are somewhere on that spectrum of everything from political organization, social organization, religious ideology, those kinds of things are all going to fit into that. All right, thanks a lot.